So up there on the board, I did a video on the uh, Instagram and Tick and Tock. You have the carb equation. Now, I don't know why they, I think they kind of made the equation difficult, to be honest. But if you add up your protein, moisture, ash if your dog food has ash, and fat, and in some cases this says starch, you'll get, and you subtract 100, then you'll get the percentage of sugar, basically carbohydrates, in your dog food. Now this dog food, sure, this is origin. It doesn't say carbs on here at all. They don't have to. Now the irony is they don't have to because they know your dog doesn't need carbohydrates. Your dog doesn't need carbohydrates. If it needed carbohydrates, they would market carbohydrates. And the mismarketing of the carbohydrates is you calling it starches and you say, huh, what's a starch? Just call it carbs. People associate carbs or starch with carbs. But it doesn't say carbs, it says so. It, it says, is that sugar? <laughs> so what's the difference between sugar, dietary starch, moisture, which is still that uh, sugar, aka carbs, and fiber, which is sugar. <laughs> when you look at the back of your label or something, I don't have nothing in here right now. I usually have some peanut butter, something I can show you. It says under carbs, it'll say dietary fiber. Says, Why? Because it's all sugar. Now, all, all these things to tell you, that's sugar. So what happens when you're feeding your dog sugar in excess? Back in the day, we used a rule called the 20% rule that a guy named Lutro Crisales created. And to be clear, Dr. Habib, uh, or not Dr. Rodney and Dr. Karen Becker, they did a video on the carb equation. Now the irony is you could turn around and just add these things up too. And you'll get about 31.2%, which still gives you about 32% of this bag being sugar. If Anything you eat as a human has more than 20% sugar in it, nine out of 10 times, it's gonna spike your insulin levels. The key to longevity in this life is to ensure that your organs are not overworking. When your organs are doing like this all day, if you've ever worked a factory job and you left a factory job and that the, everything, everything closes down, you hear that quiet for a moment. You go, man. And then you walk in in the morning and you hear that do 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 like that stuff it that's your body beating itself up when you spike that insulin level or when you basically eating too much sugar your dog doesn't need sugar to survive it doesn't need it doesn't store sugar for energy it's not the way the bod the dog's body works the dog's body is based on protein absorption and utilization and it stores fat for energy it uses some carbohydrates but you have to know exactly how to use those carbs but no dog food Needs, 30, needs to be 30 plus, let alone 40, and some of those dog foods are 50 plus percent carbs. And the video that they did, and I'm in agreement with them, they said, listen, we're not trying to bash. They, they pointed out pedigree, hill science diet, uh, quite a few others. They pointed out how much, they said, we're not trying to bash. We just ask you guys to be honest. Give the pet owners the information they need to ensure that the dog's allergies are reduced and that the quality of life increases based on the things that we know causes inflammation. Create some itises. Your dog has arthritis. Sugar is one of the things that leads to arthritis. It's a, it's a catalyst, if you would. It doesn't, do any, it doesn't do it any good. So when you're looking at carbs in the dog food, you see a bunch of chickpeas, you see lentils, you see uh, pinto beans. Look, let me ask you this. How many times you ate pinto beans? <laughs> How many times you went and ate chickpeas? And when you look at this stuff on your dog's bag, whole red lentils, when last time you went looking for this, store, this stuff in the store? Nobody wants to eat that crap. <laughs> Nobody wants, unless you go like Mediterranean food, and that's still like once a week. Once a week, once every two weeks, I'm gonna go get some lentils and some beans and enjoy it, but then I'm gonna put them jokers down. So, the body oftentimes also lacks the ability to produce lectin, or, yeah, lectin, which helps break down these types of proteins as well. Where else is lectin found? In dairy, and it says in the book, NRC book, that lectin, AKA dairy, milk, the dog's body really can't break that stuff down, if at all. It lacks the ability to absorb and utilize dairy. But they have to add carbs to keep, to make sure that the dog food's firm. They have to. There's no other way to do it. You know, like you add breadcrumbs or what, uh, egg yolk, and various things to keep that patty, that hamburger patty tight. It's the same thing, people. So, I keep getting the question. What's the best dog food? There is no fucking good dog food. 
It's that simple. There's no way for me to, to dress it up. There's not. It's just not. Dog's been around for 35,000 years. And before that, they never, I mean, dog food's maybe 130 years old. Didn't get popular, I believe, until World War II. And now you've got somebody telling you that your dog needs dog food to survive, to live, to thrive. Stop it. Stop it. And then the funny thing is, is this is, you see the marketing play right here? And it's, it, people have the nerve to say, wolf. Well, they, they got it as close as they can to the, what the wolf would eat. Fool, you ain't never seen no wolf eating no dog food. This is, this is marketing at its finest. They're with their ancestors, the wolf. When you see a, a wolf find a, dog, a bag of dog food, stop it. So if we go market dog food, quit, quit telling me that, hey, well, this is a close thing to a wolf. No, it's not. No, it's not. You want to get a, you want to get a dog with that wolf eat? Go get it some raw food, some cooked food, some meal prep food. Foods are simple. If I don't cook it, I don't feed it to the dogs at this moment in time. I keep trying the best to find the dog food. We got the origin. But our dog Tron, godly, he's seven months old and he's been keeping me up for months. God, for months, the past few months have been rough. He's gonna blow out and the irony is, is, is now that he's really got adjusted to the cooked food, I had no issues. I go, man, that's interesting. But not so interesting because I know this, but when I try to implement the dog, I'm like, I'm gonna feed him twice a day, up his calories. Well, in good calories. There's such thing as empty calories. Or foods that have no calories. He's on, he's on no dog food right now. I'm even not even warming this stuff up, so I'm giving it to him cold. And he's got no blowouts. He's pooping hole. You go. Well, that's it. <laughs> you go. That's it for the dog food. We're done here. It's so cost a little bit more? Absolutely. So find you a co-op if you're doing the raw thing. They sometimes sell in bulk and it gets a little bit cheaper, more friendly in terms of your pockets. Uh, or go to Costco if you've got a Costco card. Or I don't know if they sell at Sam's Club anymore, but look at this. They say this thing symbolizes this. This is what it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be all being here. Then you pull it out. And it looked like that there. This does not make this. I'm sorry. I don't care what nobody says. So anything that's been excluded, aka the extrusion it gone through exclusion, loses its integrity. Don't you feel better? Or if you are a red meat fan, don't you feel better when you eat Wagyu versus a Walmart steak? This is not Wagyu, to, to be clear. <laughs> it's ninety dollars a bag, but it's not Wagyu. Give your dog some Wagyu and see which one he gets more excited about. Stay tuned as always. Like, subscribe, share, hit me with questions, and take care of your fucking dogs, eh?